My name is John Capobianco, and I'm going to show you how you can use your Cisco DNA Center as a source of truth to generate a Pi ATS test bit. Now, let's quickly look at DNA Center and the APIs we're going to use to achieve this. So, let me quickly show you here. So, if we go to the DevNet Sandbox, get started with Sandbox, and we search for DNA, there are two always on and a reservable DNA center. We're going to use the always on, which looks like this. So we actually have a few devices in this topology as well as the DNA center. So the credentials and the URL are here, and I'm signed into DNA center here. Now, what do we need to make a testbed file? Well, there's two components. We need the device information, and we need some credential information. So we're going to click on the hamburger menu and go to platform, developer kit. And this is the Swagger UI for the DNA Center APIs. So let's look for credentials. And there is this device credential details. There's also a global credentials. So we're going to make the assumption that we're using a global credential. And if we try this, we can say CLI, which is the credential type that we want. And you can see we get back this payload. And it's an array. And we're going to make another assumption that the first response in the array contains the username, which is what we need, and the password. Ah, but the password is encrypted which is a good thing. We don't want to expose our username and password through the API. I'm going to show you how we can handle that. And there's a few ways we can handle it. I'll show you how, how, how I've handled it. So now the other one we want is devices. And if we look at devices, there is, there should be one that just says devices. Let's just do device instead of devices. Or actually, if we go to know your network, or site management, where did it go? There is a devices, a high level devices here. Get device count, get device list, I believe is what we want. And if we try this and run it, let's quickly look at which API we need here for devices. your network, devices, get device list. There are a lot of them here, here devices. Well, that's device health. Let's quickly look at the code and find which is the API that we want. Network device. Network device. It's just device list. Unfortunately, when we try it, there's some information here, and it's throwing an error. Now, there it is. Excuse me. Sorry about that. There's a lot of APIs. So this information has all of the stuff we need to complete the test bed. So what we have is, in particular, we have the um, software, software type. So we want this iOS XE. And you can see it's uppercase with a dash. So we have to manipulate that a little bit. And we also have the IP address in this information, the management IP address, <laughs> and the device name, which is in here somewhere as well, which is in here as well. There is a device name right here, host name. So 
those are the two APIs we need. And now let's quickly look at the code. Now all of this code is available under my Automate Your Network DNA Pi ATS testbed. It has been submitted to the Automation Exchange and it will be coming to the Automation Exchange. And now let's quickly look over the code and let's look at the readme file. So what are we using? We're going to actually use Pi ATS, a Pi ATS job within a virtual environment. Something called the REST connector and python.env. So let's quickly find the REST connector information. PyTS REST connector. And this is the documentation for the REST connector. So if we go to user guide, services, DNA center, you can see that we can make a testbed file against our APIT, our DNA center appliance, and we can use the get to get API commands using a simple device, rest, get, and then the URL to our API. So let's take a look at this code. So what I have is a testbed file, and this describes the Sandbox DNA Center 2 device, which is a type of DNAC, operating system is DNAC, it has an alias, and then this is the important part. Under connections, we're going to use the rest connector restconnector.rest with the username and the password to sign into the DNA center. These credentials could be encrypted using secret strings or um, a vaulting technology. For now, for the demonstration, they're in plain text. So we have a job file. And in PyTS, the job file handles the abstraction for us of loading the testbed file and starting our Python script and handling all of the runtime stuff. It abstracts all of that complexity from the Python code. Now let's look at the code itself. So I'm using operating system, logging, Jinja2. Now I don't need to install Jinja2 because it actually comes part of the PyETS installation. I'm using AE test from PyETS and the banner from the log utilities in PyETS. And finally, the .env, load.env. Now, I have this env file where we can set the password. So you can make this with a git ignore that the env file is not loaded at, at, uh, as part of the git commits and everything to keep this safe. And the idea here is that we're going to get the username from the Global Credentials API and allow you, the user, to set the password to complete the testbed, since the password is obfuscated by DNA Center's API. So we're going to invoke the load.environment and set device password from that get env device password. We set up our login, and then we set up our common setup. And I might actually add a class here. I'm going to add a class here. Let's do that right now. Where we have a common setup. So typically a PyTS job has a common setup, a um, cleanup, which I'm adding now, common cleanup, common cleanup, and we're just going to disconnect, disconnect from our device. So I'm going to push that code in. I, I didn't do the cleanup. So typically a PyTS job has a setup, the testing, and then the cleanup. And in the common setup, we pass that testbed in and we connect to the APIC. Once we've connected to the APIC, I'm going to set the self.device as the device name in a loop inside of testbed devices items. In this case, it's only one, but this is how I'm invoking this to capture the device. So then I'm going to get the credential data as a test in PyTS. And again, this is simply credential list, the variable I want to store the, the, the payload in, self, device, rest, get, and then that API that I got from the Swagger UI. 
the credentials. I set up self.credential data as the credential list.json. I mean, I could filter this and say CLI here, doesn't make much of a difference. Then I want to do the, the get, rest.get, of the network devices JSON that we looked at. I'm going to set self device data as device list JSON and then the response key. If we look at the JSON, it's all nested inside of a parent key called response. So let's filter down into the response. Next, we're going to open up our Jinja2 template, which we'll look at in a second. We're going to render that template, passing in the data to template as the device data, the username as the credential data, and the password as that environment variable device password. We're then going to save testbed.yaml. Because this is a PyETS job, we're also going to take another test class and validate the testbed using the operating system command and sending this CLI command, pyets validate testbed, and then our testbed file, testbed.yaml. So we can validate and verify that the testbed that was created is a valid pyets testbed. Then we're going to disconnect from our device as a cleanup step. I hope that doesn't throw any problems here, but let's try it. So looking at the Jinja2 template, this is where the magic really happens. And if I were to show you, say, side by side, well, I need to find a, 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 an SSH. Let me do that real quick. I'm going to find an existing SSH testbed and show you how to template this. Uh, uh. Okay, so what we have in here is an SSH testbed. And I basically copied and pasted this, and this is the structure that we want to generate from the DNA API. So we're going to have devices. We're going to specify that it's a YAML file, devices. And then for each device in the data to template, the DNA center devices payload, if the software type is not a Cisco controller, because that doesn't work, we need an actual iOS XE, iOS XR, etc. iOS device. Well, make this line for the host name of the device. Use the host name for the alias. Set the type from the type information. And then remember I showed you that it's uppercase including a hyphen for iOS dash XE, iOS dash XR. Well, we're going to use Jinja2 filter to make it lowercase and replace any hyphens with nothing. So remove the hyphen. Use the platform ID. And then for the credentials, the username is going to come from the credential information. And again, remember, it's an array. So we're going to assume that it's the first entry in the array of global credentials.username. Then the password is going to come from the environment variable. We're going to hard code SSH and hard code port 22 and use the management IP address for the IP address. So that's the code. So let's give it a run and let's see what happens here. So this is from start to finish how you can do this yourself. So we're going to make a Python 3 virtual environment and we'll just call this DNA test beds. We're going to activate Whoops, ha, I made a mistake. I'm not in the root pill. Just give me one second. We're going to do that again. We're going to source DNA test beds, then activate to activate our virtual environment. You can see now I'm in the virtual environment. And let's follow the readme instructions. So pip install IETS full. It's important to add the full installation. This will just take a second or two, and then we're going to add the REST connector and the Python virtual environment packages. So this is almost done. 
Now, this came from a real need. We had, I had someone actually ask me if this is something that's available. Now, I know there's other packages for Cisco Prime and, DNA, uh, and NetBox as the source of truth. Um, some of them are community driven. Jonas did the Cisco Prime uh, code. So then we want the pip install rest.connector. Pip install python dash dot env. We're going to clear the screen and we're going to head into our DNA IETS test bed, and then we're going to say IETS run job DNA underscore job. So let's watch the job. We'll see how fast this actually all happens. And we'll take a look at this output as well. So everything passed. This is good. And you can see our steps here in the code. We do the common setup and we connect successfully to the DNA. We get the credential data, response 200. We get the device data, response 200. We set up our template, we generate the testbed template, and we validate the testbed. And here is the validation step. And you can see that there's a couple of warning messages, but the testbed has three devices in it with no errors, just a couple of warnings, because we don't have interface definitions, something you can ignore. And then we disconnect successfully from the DNA center. So everything passed. We could also do PyUTS logs view and take a look at this log, and we can see all of the different information from the log. So now we have a testbed.yaml file that looks like this. We have Leaf 1 ABC Inc. We have the platform iOS XE. We have the username from the API and the password from the environment variable, and we have the IP address. So this generated a testbed with three devices. This could be hundreds of devices, thousands of devices, in a valid testbed.yaml file that will work for PyETS jobs. Now, I guess our follow-up step here would be to run a PyTS job against that testbed, but I, you know, I don't have a VPN and it's really just the DNA center sandbox. I don't have access to those downstream devices. So you can clone the repository from the automation exchange or from automate your network, GitHub repo. You can run it as is against the always on sandbox just to see how it works. And then you can point it at your APIC and see if it generates a valid testbed file for your network. Thanks again. I appreciate your interest in this. And let me know if you have any questions, if you have any problems, hit any snags, reach out to me on Twitter or on LinkedIn, or you know, just drop me a line. Thanks again. We'll see you soon.